Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Extreme Performance Series video blog. My name is Todd Muirhead, and today we're going to talk about the hands-on labs and the behind-the-scenes, how we maintain the performance of this incredible operation. <laughs> and today, to talk with us about that, we have one of the uh, one of the experts, the one of the performance engineers uh, for the hands-on labs, Josh. So, Josh, go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. Hello, everyone. Uh, as Todd said, my name is Josh. Josh Nay. I've been with VMware for about 13 plus years. Um, lucky enough to participate in the hands-on labs over the last five, six, seven uh, years. So I think a lot of people are familiar with the hands-on labs from VMworld. It's one of the most popular uh, aspects of VMworld. People love to come and, and, and take the labs. Um, so, so let's 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 um let's give a little bit of background about about the hands-on labs and, and how you first got involved with them. Several years back, I don't want to date myself too much. I actually was one of the people who created content for the hands-on labs. Uh, go figure! I had created uh, or helped create the performance lab. Um, during that year, we had something of a unfortunate event that led to uh, production outage. Uh, nobody ever wants to be part of this, but we were, um, and we had to talk to and work with customers who were at VMworld at that time uh, firsthand to kind of get things back on track. Um, during the course of that uh, post-mortem, somebody had the great idea of wheeling in a whiteboard and asking for ideas on how we could improve. I myself, uh, again, being the performance guy, walked up and said, how about we performance test this at scale before the show, before VMworld? Yeah, and, and um, I'll say that uh, my own personal experience is that the, the hands-on labs have been much, much more stable uh, ever since we started this process, um, which you were a big part of getting started, of doing extensive performance testing before. So we're going to talk about that um, as we go. So I think you've got a few slides that we're going to use as we, as we talk about things. And um, I think if I think we're going to start off with a little bit of discussion about exactly what the hands-on labs are, and um, go from there. All right. So, what are the hands-on labs? The hands-on labs, in the simplest uh, form, is a way for customers, partners, VMware employees to try out all of the VMware products and services from the comfort of their own web browser. Um, it doesn't require any installation. It's free. You can take them as many times as you want. Uh, these things are uh, effectively virtualized data centers. And so you get full, you know, like vSAN-like environments that you can play with, uh, tear down, destroy, et cetera. Don't like what you did. You just take another one. So customers could come in and see uh, how to set a vSAN or Tanzu or... Anything, right? Absolutely. You know, I use it as a way of keeping up to date with all the products that we have. I also use it as a sandbox, right? I want to deploy something real quick. I want to see, okay, what happens if I change this NSX setting? It's a great way to do it and not have to deal with all of the other stuff to get those products and services in a sandbox online environment. And they're very, very popular, as you can see at the bottom of that slide there. Over 3 million labs have been delivered online. So quite, uh, quite the uh, exercise in scale, if you will. Yeah, it's been a hugely successful um, endeavor <laughs> over the years. It's been great. One of the things that I think most people don't know is what is the infrastructure that backs this? And this, what you're seeing here, is a diagram of what our infrastructure looked like for VMworld 2021. And it comprises of a lot of different things, but the key elements here, and I'm gonna have to read this whole thing, is that we have seven unique clouds that we're using as the providers of all the content. Now, again, these are nested or and virtualized data centers, right? Lots of VMs, very heavy, running all the same products and services you're familiar with. And they're running across these different clouds. Some are public and hybrid, some are private, doesn't really matter, right? To you, it's transparent. We do really interesting things like we run in 
IBM, you run an VMC and AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, and then vSphere.next, which is really a huge dog fooding effort to run on unreleased versions of vSphere, vSAN, NSX, vCloud Director, et cetera. So this is really cool yeah. because when you come in as a, as a, as a user, your, your, your lab experience, you're going to be running on vSAN or the performance lab, whichever one you pick. You're, you're gonna have no idea which cloud it's actually running on. That's all handled um, on the back end, and it's um, scaled across all of them, right? To 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 maintain the performance um, that we need, and so it's really this this like you said, this transparent uh, experience for the for the user, which is really cool. Exactly, and 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 we're doing a lot of the things that we encourage our users to do. We're bursting into these other cloud capacities because we need that capacity for a short period of time for like VMworld. We're running a lot of the tons of observability by Wavefront, um, uh, vRealize operations, log insight, et cetera, using those things to help us manage this environment, again, to make it seamless, to make it so that we can give you lab content in roughly 60 seconds or less. Anyway. Wow, so, so this is a really cool environment. Now, my next question is, how do we make sure that we have the right capacity uh, on each of these clouds to, to deliver, which is, which is what you're really good at, right? Figuring out um, through all the load testing, how do we get the right capacity in the right places at the right time? Right, and the, the question that we're ultimately trying to answer is, can we go from no users or very few users in these cloud capacities as we prepare for something like VMworld and handle the massive day-over-day -day increase in users without failure, without issue. Um, and again, knowing how to balance those things. And we do so with a variety of things uh, for performance analysis, et cetera. I actually have a slide here that shows you most of the things that we do. And we do stuff around automation as you would expect. Um, this is around automatically provisioning labs or where you might need them. We do monitoring to again, to understand what the quality of those labs are making sure those services, those VMs, they all come up cleanly. And then we do a whole suite of things for performance analysis, understanding what cloud scale, what the storage looks like, what the networking looks like, et cetera. And actually, I do, I do have one example that we have the time for today. I'm gonna to talk a little bit about cloud churn. And what this is, is this is understanding the vApp lifecycle. Right, and so again, for the folks who may not be familiar with this uh, phrase, a vApp is just a collection of VMs that have shared networking. Um, in this case, it's probably eight or more VMs. Then they have nested ESX within them who are also running nested VMs, et cetera. And what we wanna understand with this test is how many users or how many vApps can we push through each of these clouds and what the effect of high churn does. Now, the life cycle is fairly simple. You have a template, you create that VAP, you boot it, then you wait till you get to a steady state, you stop it, and you destroy it and do it all over again. And we do this across all the different organizational virtualized data centers. And we do this multi-threaded, et cetera. And we find really fun things or really bad things, depending on how you look at it. Bad VAP networking, we see some stability issues sometimes. See some DBs maybe filling up, maybe even memory leaks, et cetera. And these are all things that we're attempting to find before users ever set foot into the environment. And because as I said earlier, we're doing this within our vSphere.next environments, we're oftentimes finding problems or issues before they ever release to the public. So getting stuff back to the product teams. Yeah, so I think that last point is, is something really cool that maybe a lot of people aren't aware of. We, we have found many bugs or issues in our own code through the use of uh, VM, the, VM, the hands-on labs at VMworld over the years. And those things are driven back into the product to improve it. Um, so that when exactly the right. versions come out, they're, they're more stable, they can handle these higher loads. Um, the, the other thing yeah. that's really cool is that the, all this testing that you're doing, kind of going back to what we started at the beginning, 
was put into place to find all the issues before we got to a big event like VMworld. So now our experience as end users is, is much better due to all of this, this testing. And this is just one, you, I know you just picked one of the, <laughs> the 20 so or so things on that, that, that previous slide to, to go into depth about how you do the load testing. This is just one of the things that you do, right? Yep, absolutely. Um, this is what I think is one of the best ways to understand how many users uh, a cloud can uh, handle. Um, the other thing is that we also dive into those B apps and check those services. So again, if you're running these very complex services and you have a very deep software stack, things can happen. Services can fail, especially in uh, nested uh, virtualized environments. We actually dive into those environments and destroy those B apps so that users aren't getting known bad labs. Just a couple of examples of how we're trying to make sure it's as great as it can be for everybody who takes one. Well, Josh, this is a really interesting talk Get to hear from you about the details of how we are doing multi-cloud uh, large deployments ourselves in the form, of this, in this case, of the hands-on labs. I'd like to thank everybody for watching this episode of the Extreme Performance Series and look forward to seeing you on a future video as well. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for having me.